faith to be a startup, I'm ready. Um, you know, uh, experience is not always the best teacher. Um, to be completely honest, experience has made me more fearful. Uh, the, the growing old, acquiring a knowledge and experience has all only choked the childlike faith that I believe I was born with. Um, fears that I deal with today, I used to not deal with them when I was a kid, when I was a young adult even. I, I feel like I'm more aware, every day I'm more aware of new threats. <laughs> um, I'm, I've learned fears as I got older. I, I got more things to worry about and to be anxious about today than I have ever had in my entire life. Why? Because I have learned to take a picture, and I hope you get this, I have learned to take a picture over the years, I have learned to take a picture of my life through the eyes of sight than through my spirit. I've learned to take a picture about life with my mind and not with my spirit. That's something to think about. Especially in the information era that I grew up in. I grew up in, an, in the in, in information era. I know more than I probably should know. Uh, I am more informed. I, I, I like to say it this way. I'm too smart for my own good. Um, uh, Google has become a god to many of us. Let me, let me prove this to you. Uh, when you are sick, who do you seek first, God or Google? <laughs> right? Who, do you Google your symptoms right away? Uh, YouTube has replaced in a lot of ways the need for fathers, the, the need for mentors, right? Because if I need to know something, where do I go? I go to a, a video that says, uh, how do I do that, right? And it, and it shows it to me. And although I am grateful, I am grateful for technology, I am grateful for these resources, I have to admit that the amount of information flooding my brain and flooding your brain has led you and me to two different places. It has led us to pride or it has led us to unhealthy fear. To pride and to unhealthy fear. Moving us away from the, the biblical principle taught to us in Proverbs 9.10 where it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And, and, and just as knowledge, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2, uh, just as knowledge outside of God puffs up, let me say this, wisdom outside of God produces fear. Wisdom, you guys are so loud back there. Wisdom outside of God produces fear, right? Fear grabs a hold of you when your mind, when your thoughts stay outside of God long enough. And this is where I get in trouble myself. When, when, when fear tells God what to do and not God tells my fears what to do. And the foundation, I found out the foundation on every fear that I have ever experienced or felt is lie. Is a lie. Is a lie from the enemy. Right? Who, which, whose lie are you believing that is causing you to be fearful? I'm telling you, by the Spirit of the Lord, I, I believe this with all my heart. God wants to restore inside of you and me a childlike faith. We need it. We need it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Jesus said in Matthew 18, verse 3, He says, As surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. We need it. Jesus is being clear. He says, we must go back to the simplicity of our faith and trust in Him like a child, or we by no means will enter the kingdom of heaven. It is not knowledge that will grant you heaven. It is a childlike attitude that will grant you the access to the kingdom of God. 
You know, recently I was able to face um, one of my fears, uh, the fear of heights. <laughs> uh, I always like to say that I almost got fired from a job one time because of my fear of heights. Um, my wife and I, we went with our dear friends to uh, Moab, Utah. We went to do some hiking. And I remember in uh, one of the last hikes that we did, um, oh man, I, I got scared. I got fearful. There, closer to God than I have ever, ever been. <laughs> I was 20, I'm telling you, I was 20 steps away from the top of the mountain. And there I realized I'm afraid. And I just, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I realized this is deeper than I even thought it was. Um, and I believe that God took me there to heal my heart. And so I began to pray, right? But the problem is that the fear of highs doesn't even make it on my top five fears. It doesn't even make it to the top five. And I wish I could tell you that I actually prayed and then the Lord strengthened me and then I got to the top of the mountain and I did the rocky move and I... No. I turned around. I turned around. Um, and they're closer to heaven than I've ever been. I realized that on the way down, it was a lot worse because now I could see how high I really was, Right? Well, long story short, on the way home, driving from Dallas to, to Tyler, my wife and I were talking just about how good the trip had been, but then I started to share with her, I just got overwhelmed and, and really emotional, and I began to share with her how much I hate being afraid of heights, and, and how much I hate being afraid of so many other different things. And I said to her, I, I know I can afford to be a little more fearless. And I know that God is, is calling me to confront fear just the same way that a couple of years ago He called me to confront anxiety and panic attacks. I know that the Lord is calling me to this. And in our conversation that we were having, we started to share with one another how we handle fear differently. She handles it one way, I handle it another way. See, for me, I tend to, when I encounter a, a, a situation that, that triggers fear in me, I tend to try to fight it off. I fight it off. And I push myself. And, and no one would ever know that I am afraid. You, you would not know that I am scared. And everyone will assume, well, Frankie is so confident. He's not afraid of anything. While deep inside, I am just dying. And when in private... Like on the way to Dallas, from Dallas to Tyler, I am just broken. I, am, um, I have chills. I have, I have this adrenaline that just left me and I have sweats and I get chills and I'm shaken up. That's how I deal with fear. Nobody would ever know that I am afraid of public speaking. Would you guess that? No. No. And, and, maybe, and maybe for you is different. Maybe for you is different. By the way, when I was in school, I had to, I, when I do presentations in school, I had to like grab a hold of something and I was just holding it like this. Because uh, I was afraid. I am still am in so many ways. But, but for you may be different. Maybe you're not one that fights it off. Maybe, maybe your response is to avoid the things that make you fearful. You, you, you don't want to be a part. You just look the other way and you run from whatever scares you. Or maybe, or, or maybe you deal with fear by just freezing. It just freezes you completely and, and you don't know how to deal with whatever scares you. But regardless of how you deal with fear or how I deal with fear, I know this one thing. Fear is not God's plan for your life or for my life. Amen. And fear is a, is a devil's favorite tool to torment us. To torment us. The Apostle John said this in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Fear involves torment. Torment. In other words, fear is crippling. Fear, fear of life, fear of death, fear of judgment. That sums it up right there. And here's one thing I told Danielle 
um, just, just as I was being super vulnerable, in that moment I said, I know that anyone who did anything worthwhile in their life had to overcome their deepest fears and their greatest insecurities. Moses, for example. Think about Moses. He doubted his ability to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. He feared Pharaoh's power. He feared whether people would follow him or not. Gideon, for example, he was afraid. He was so afraid and so insecure that he even had to, he needed a fleece to be able to know that God was with him. Now, these two men, for example, they overcame their fears. But what about Elijah? He feared Jezebel and he asked to die. And you know what? He did. His prayer was granted. So my question for you and me is, what is fear doing to you? What is fear doing to you? You know that um, fear actually can affect your your, your physical health? I was doing some research. Fear weakens your immune system. Fear can cause uh, uh, cardiovascular damage. Gastrointestinal problems, and it can decrease your fertility. Ah, studies also show that fear can lead you to accelerated aging. I don't want that. And even premature death. Fear can also lead you to emotional and mental consequences. Hear this. Fear numbs your ability to have loving feelings. Fear leads you to obsessive and compulsive thoughts. For example, uh, fear makes, makes, it, makes it difficult to think clearly. It makes it difficult for you to make good decisions. Fear makes you, and I hope you hear this, fear makes you reactive to situations. And more, more susceptible to impulsive reactions. I don't want fear. And here's the good news about fear. Fear is a learned behavior. And guess what? Faith is also a learned behavior. Think about Romans 10, 17. Paul said, so so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, even now, the Holy Spirit, as you're hearing God's word, he's stirring inside of you the ability to overcome fear. You are learning faith. And and, and I hope you hear me. We are constantly, constantly learning fear by what we hear. Let me just say it this way. We are constantly Learning fear by hearing God's voice, just as we are constantly learning fear by watching the news. You're learning fear. Because they're not going to tell you good news. Even if there's something good happening, that's not what's going to make it to the news. So by the way, if you're listening to the news more than you should, you're learning fear, not faith. Especially now, especially today. So here's, here's the keys that, that I, I feel like the Lord has been, has been stirring my heart. And, and, I, and I've been in this journey for, for a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks actually. Wow, three weeks, time flies. Uh, but I've been in this journey just asking the Lord to help me overcome my fears. Like I said, the fear of heights, as, as terrible as it, it seemed to me, it doesn't even make it to my top five. It does not. So, do you want to overcome fear? Man, you guys are so fearless. (laughs) Maybe we should swap seats. So, Paul wrote this to his son Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. And and I'm going to read it, and I hope you hear this. He, He said, he's talking to Timothy, and he says, When I call to remembrance, this is Paul, The genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Louis, and your mother, Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, 
which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Okay, think about it. Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, you, you, your family is, is your descent from a family of genuine faith. And the word genuine means without hypocrisy, sincere, without hypocrisy, sincere. And it's genuine faith referring, and I hope you hear this, referring to the gift of faith. It is something that is not produced by man, but is given by God. And Paul says to Timothy, stir up, Timothy, the, the gift of faith that is in you, because God did not give you a spirit of fear, but He gave you a spirit of faith. He gave you the gift of faith. Faith that is without hypocrisy. Faith that does not waver. Faith that doesn't, that doesn't go up and down. Faith that doesn't go for what is convenient. But faith, genuine, sincere, applicable, practical faith. Come on, say it with me. God has not given me the spirit of fear. But the gift of faith. The gift of faith that, that Abel needed to present a, most, a more acceptable offering, a more, more excellent sacrifice than his brother Cain. The kind of faith that Noah had when God said, build a boat in the middle of the desert. And he said, yes, Lord, to save his family. The kind of faith that Abraham needed when he chose to leave everything behind to receive a divine inheritance. The kind of faith that Moses needed to be the leader of a great nation and follow God every step of the way. That's the kind of faith. The kind of faith that without which no one can please the Lord. That's the kind of faith that God has given us. And this gift of faith stirs inside of us, according to Paul, creates, creates reveals three New realities in us. Three new realities in us. Power, love, and sound mind. You see, fear leads you to the opposite reality. To the opposite reality. To physical and emotional weakness rather than power. To, to self-hate and condemnation instead of love. To impulsiveness and reactiveness instead of a sound mind. So, so let, me, let me go a little bit deeper into what this faith versus, versus fear looks like. And I'm going to make three statements to go along with the verse of Scripture. Faith activates power. Faith activates power. The word power there that Paul is using is the word dunamis. Dunamis. And it refers to the miraculous power and might and strength of God. The same power that caused, as, 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 as the, the Apostle Luke was writing, and he says, Dr. Luke said, the, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. That's the dunamis. That's the dunamis. The dunamis that the angel told Mary that was going to come upon her to conceive Jesus. The power that is mentioned every time Jesus would heal or set somebody free. The dunamis of God. The power, this power is activated by faith. In case, in case we're not clear here, in this church we believe in the power of God. We believe in healing. We believe in deliverance. We believe in the dunamis of God. God's power did not get diluted when the apostle passed away. God's power is still as present today as it was when Jesus was on this earth. The dunamis of God. And your faith and my faith activate that kind of power. The dunamis. I see it every week. At love indeed. When the, when the captives get set free, when the, when the oppressed gets healed, 
Miss Lynn and, and, and Murray, they, they just saw it. They just saw it yesterday when somebody got saved at the uh, at the at the uh, country fest in Lindale. Dave, David Fowler was just telling me one, whenever he was in North Carolina giving boxes of food, somebody got healed of a 14-year-old tumor they had. The dunamis of God. The dunamis of God. God's power, God's strength. So fear is crippling you, weakening your body and emotions while faith is wanting to strengthen and activate your faith inside of you. Jesus told Martha in, in John chapter 11, verse 40, after, you know, she makes a really cute statement. She says, well, my, 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 my brother Lazarus, he stinks. He's been dead for four days. And Jesus says to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? What are you facing today? What is going on in your life? What are you going through right now? High waters, low waters, what is it that needs to be exposed today to God's power? You were not given a spirit of fear. And if you would believe, you would see. The dunamis of God. Let me ask you a question. What medical report do you need to expose today to the power of God? What financial situation do you need to bring to the power of God? What, what thing, what is beyond your ability that you need to expose today to the dunamis of God? Miracles are in the house today. Amen. Miracles are in the house today. So I'm just going to stop and I'm going to acknowledge that word right now. Miracles are in the house today. So if you have a situation beyond your abilities, I'm going to make, mention three things. If you have a situation, financial situation or health in your body or something that is beyond your abilities, I want you to stand up right now. I'm gonna, I want you to stand right now. And if you're watching us online or you're watching us live right now, or you're watching us on the, on the replay, I want you to stand up right where you are because miracles are in the house. And fear, I'm just telling you right now, those of you standing, fear has lied to you long enough telling you that it is not possible. Don't give your hopes up. God is not answering. God is not listening to you. Fear has weakened your body and your emotions long enough. And God wants to stir inside of you the gift of faith today. So Father, right now, I rebuke the devourer. According to Malachi 3, Lord, I agree with the heavens in rebuking infirmity, rebuking poverty, rebuking anything that the enemy has used to cause fear in our hearts, to torment us. In Jesus' name, fear about your health, fear about your finances, Fear even, I hear the Lord say this, fear even about your own mortality. In Jesus' name, fear you have to bow the knee to the name of Jesus. And right now I declare that you are healed. I declare that you are blessed. And I declare that your body is prospering and being strengthened right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith versus fear. Hmm. Fear involves torment. We just, I just quoted that, but we're going to read it. Because faith stirs up love. <laughs> fear involves torment, but fear stirs up love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 through 19. This is, what, this is what the Apostle John is saying. Love has been perfected among us in this. Oh, has perfected in us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this present world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love Him because He first loved us. 
You know, the Apostle John is saying this. He's saying, your awareness, my awareness of God's love for you and me, our awareness of God's love for us should grow so that we can confidently face this world and we can eventually confidently face the day of judgment. Amen. I hope you hear that. Amen. Your, your love, God's love, your awareness of God's love should grow just as fear tries to grow, but the, the love of God should grow inside of you so that you're better at facing this life, just like Jesus, and you're able to encounter judgment at the end times. Because what's the alternative? The alternative is fear, which involves torment. And the word torment, torment there means the fear, the fear of punishment. You know, this, this, this speaks of this, this dread that we have sometimes as people of God Himself. This, this, this thought that He's going to get us if we don't do this, this, and 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 this. Or, or the, the, the fear that He's going to deprive us of something, of His blessings, if we don't do X, Y, Z. And I know this type of feeling. Hear me. I know this type of feeling. This, these voices of condemnation. Let's name them like that. These voices of condemnation. You, you know these voices. I'm, I'm sure you do. There's something wrong with you. I'm a lost cause. I'll be chained to my sin and my infirmity forever. I'll never change. God doesn't care about me. Here's the evidence. He has cast me off forever. But God's love casts out fear. Uh, I grew up hearing about God's love my entire life. I, I grew up, I, I, I was born, my parents were already in the church. They were already believers so I, I know no life outside of just hearing consistently about God's love for me. But I have to admit that I did not understand God's love until I became a father. The, there was one day in particular, I was half asleep. It was two in the morning. I was feeding Levi his bottle. Oh. By the way, he kept us waking up till like 11 months. It was miserable. Uh, but one day I was like, I was just like, uh, I was just feeding his bottle. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, as I was holding him, you know, feeding his bottle, I had this thought, this realization. I, I would die so that he didn't die. I, I would take any, any kind of, infirmity, any kind of pain, any, any, I would take it on me so that he didn't have to suffer. Yeah. And right there, as I was having these, these thoughts, I, I felt the perfect love of the Father. And I was able to be aware for the first time, not theologically, but in, in a real way, I was able to know God's affections. For me. God's love for me. And I'm just going to say this. I don't know what type of God you have been introduced to. But the God that Jesus came to introduce first and foremost is a loving Father. Yeah. It's a loving Father. A Father that will, will keep you, will love you. His love is patient. His love is, doesn't seek its own. His love is perfected in us. Fear will keep you stuck in torment, in punishment, in condemnation. While faith will awaken you to the real love of the Father. He's a good Father. He's a good Father. And here's the... The third 
and final statement that I want to make. Faith leads me to a sound mind. It leads me to a sound mind. You know, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing worse than deciding in fear. <laughs> there's nothing worse than making a decision out of fear. Let me say it that way. I have made some of those. And I've been wrong all the time. How many, how many times do we react in fear rather than trusting the mind of Christ? Oh, let, let, me, let me say it this way. Do you trust the mind of Christ more than you trust your own mind? Say, say, when, say when, uh, when, you know, you're... You're, you're facing a situation beyond your ability. Say, say that. Say whatever it is. Say you're facing a situation beyond your abilities. Do you overstress on how to fix it? How to make it work? Or are you able to surrender your need to fix and control to the mind of Christ? Is fear driving your life and decisions? Or is your trust in God driving your decisions in your life. And it is easier said than done. Boy, do I know that. I'm preaching to myself. I am a fixer by nature. I want to figure things out. I, I, my instinct, just so you know, my instinct is to control possibilities at all costs. <laughs> And, and, and the more that I, that I realize that, the more that I realize that the key to, to, to overcoming fear is simple. Let go of control. Amen. <laughs> and I can tell you that the enemy has used, has used this in my life against me more than I care to admit. And oftentimes what happens is that the enemy will keep me doing a couple of things. I'll share them with you. He keeps me chasing my own solutions. Anybody? He keeps me focusing on how to fix it. Or three, he keeps me talking about the complexities and the possibilities. And at the end of the day, I am worn out mentally. I am depleted. And ultimately, what these things do is they keep me stuck in fear. The fear of tomorrow, the fear of the unknown, the, the, the fear of, uh, of failure, you name it. The fear of death. All kinds of fears. And the reason why I can tell you, too, that I am more fearful today than I've ever been is because I have four kids. Now, I can only imagine people that have four kids plus grandkids, plus great-grandkids. And I keep, I keep telling them, I, I think I said it before, and I'll say it again. We can pray, but the world will continue on its trajectory. And in 50 years, somebody is going to be saying, this is for sure the worst generation. And we will be the conservative, nice people. It's the trajectory. So we either pray or fear. Those are our two options. Amen. We either trust in God or fear. That's our only two options. And, and so I want to challenge you with this thought. And I'm closing with this thought. And I want the, the worship team to get ready. Did you get my text? Surprise. You can read your text in church. You can be the only person on their phone reading their text right now. <laughs> But I want to challenge you with this thought that, um, that I've been challenged by. You or nothing, God. You or nothing, God. Are you willing, I'm just asking you, are you willing to eliminate all other possibilities, all other alternatives to say you or nothing, God? You know, this is what leads me to a sound mind. 
my ability to trust the voice of my Father. This is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. You or nothing, God. Faith like a child. Hmm. How, how many of you can, can admit, and you can raise your hand, I'll, I'll raise it too. How many of you can admit that you have lost your childlike faith? And you, know, and you know why I'm sure that we have all lost it at some degree? Because of experience. Because of disappointments. Because we have experienced setbacks in life. Because we have experienced trauma. Because we have experienced failed expectations and failed relationships. And all of these things, without knowing, they have been chipping off on your ability to have a faith like a child. And sometimes I miss that. See, I wish I would have understood this when my parents would say, Frankie, you're trying to grow up so fast, then when you're grown, you're, wanna, you're gonna want to go back. And I wish sometimes that I could go back to the simplicity of being a kid. I wish I could not worry anymore about paying bills. Ha <laughs> ha. And, and, unknowing, and unknowingly, I'm just going to say this, unknowingly, we have built our homes on the sand and not on the rock. And, and this is what it looks like. We have built our, 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 our houses on pride and fear. Instead of the rock Jesus. And that's why, and I'm just going to tell you, that's why life feels unstable right now. That's why... Your marriage feels unstable right now. That's why your grandkids feel stable right now. That's why your emotions feel, feel unstable right now. Because you have built your house on pride or on fear. And right now, I, do, I believe it with all my heart. God wants us to take a picture with our heart and not with our mind of what life looks like. You know, there is, a, there is a fine line right there, right there between faith and fear. If you can picture this, faith and fear, and you're right there, you're in that line. And what this line represents is your fixation. What are you fixating upon? Are you looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith? Or are you fixating on the problems and the what ifs and the possible scenarios that don't even exist? Welcome to the story of my life. I was at Walmart on Friday and I was looking for, for mosquito uh, repellent for the yard. And then I realized, wow, my bushes are sort of overgrown. I better buy the scissors for just, uh, you know, to clip these things. And I, right there, as I'm standing on the, on, on the, uh, in front of the scissors, I had this thought. But what if the kids find them? But what if they start playing with it? But what if one of them kills another one? I'm just telling you, it got really, 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 really dark. And in that moment, I realized I am right there between faith and fear. And my fixation reflects my frustration. So we need to take a picture. We need to get better at taking a picture with our heart and not with our mind. And I'm just going to say this. Who is teaching you fear? Fox News? CNN? Who, who is teaching you fear? Because you're learning it. It is weakening your body. It is weakening your emotions. And it is weakening everything that you have inside of you that makes you strong. Allow the word of the Lord to strengthen you. Cast out any voice, any person. Man, if you talk to me about the news, I will probably have a small, the smallest conversation with you ever. If you talk to me about politics, you and I will have the shortest conversation ever. Sounds like a cliche, but I care more about who is in my house and who is in the White House. Faith wants to reveal to you, listen to this, 
He wants to reveal to you a new reality. And maybe your reality has been different. Your, for some of you, your reality has been illness and sickness and infirmity. That's been your reality. And God says, I want to trade you. I want to show you my reality, which is power. For some of you, your reality has been emotional torment, condemnation, self-hatred. Well, God wants to reveal to you a new reality, the love of the Father. For some of you, your reality has been stress, <laughs> has been worry, has been fear about tomorrow. And God wants to show you a new reality, the reality of a sound mind. Just stand with me. I feel it. The Lord wants to set us fear, uh, free. He wants to set us free. So we're going to do some cleansing, some detoxing right now. And I want you to close your eyes and I'm gonna, I want you to ask yourself, what lie have I believed? And in that lie, lies your greatest and deepest fear. Is it a lie about tomorrow? Is it a lie about your past? Is it a lie about...